Ellen and I are our GPs working in, in Llandailo and Llandubri respectively. And I, I've had the, the privilege and joy of working with, with Ellen for the last five years as programme directors in the, uh, the GP scheme in, in Carmarthen. So, uh, thank you for the invitation. And we'll make sure we will keep it to 10 minutes because, as you know, we're only entitled to 10 minutes for all our patients. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we'll keep it to just under 10 minutes. Um, so we, we plan to just very briefly discuss the integrated GP fellowship scheme and being GPs with simple minds, its conception was based around the KISS philosophy of keeping it simple and stupid. And um, the initial vision really uh, was to keep recently qualified GPs to remain in our area at the end of their GP training. We were losing quite a lot um, but what's interesting, this, this project has um, moved into a, a, a greater national interest by the Royal College of GPs have heard about it and would like to extend that. And I guess the, the easy extension would be to uh, uh, extend it to Howell Dha initially in Ceredigion and Pembroke. And, and I'd, I think it wouldn't have occurred without a, uh, a leap of faith by Howell Dha. Uh, and we hope we they continue with their leap of faith. And also, uh, we've we've had great support for, uh, from uh, Louis, our, our our mentor. So, so th th I think there's a, a recognition for the need of generalists in primary and secondary care. Um, both sectors focus far too much, we believe, on super specialisation, resulting in what Balint, the the Hungarian psychoanalyst who worked in the Tavistock Centre for a long time. Uh, talked about the collusion of anonymity, where patients bounce from one specialty to another without anyone taking actual responsibility for the patient as, as a person. So in addition to needing more generalists, I, we, we feel that primary and secondary care need to work more collaboratively at the moment, especially after COVID. We, we believe that our, our values and, and philosophies of care are exactly the same but it, it feels that we've become more distant from each other somehow over the, over the far past few years with, with less respect towards each other's own specialities. And, and this mutual respect needs to happen again. So we, we know there's a recruitment retention in rural areas, uh, and this is a major issue. So we were interested in trying to attract GPs uh, to come and work in, in Hawildar of all specialties. So Ellen will describe the um, the post in a little bit more more detail. But essentially, there were going to be five sessions of the the fellow working in in primary care. Uh, there was then what we thought was a really important thing: a, a one mentoring session a week, so that the um, the uh, fellows could come and discuss things with with Ellen and myself, whatever those were. There were then going to be two sessions in in secondary care and one or uh, two sessions for postgraduate um, development. So we, we were hoping, and as has been proven to be the case, uh, get um, the, the fellows to do postgraduate qualifications in their specialty. So the, the next slide I think is coming up. Our, our hopes at the beginning then really was a, a greater understanding of each other's work as primary and secondary care uh, with increase in respect due to this integrated post. Um, we were setting up fellows to be employed. We were hoping that they would be employed at the end of the year in a vulnerable practice that they were being placed in, a vulnerable practice that wasn't likely, uh, that wasn't in danger at time of being taken over by the health board, uh, but that, they, that there was something that could have happened without support from the fellows. And, and this was giving an opportunity for those GP partners to recruit what we believed were high quality GPs. And I mentioned this before, the, the mentoring was essential. Many inexperienced GPs are extremely anxious about risk management and, and poor time management. So we had an opportunity to discuss these concerns during our mentorship. They were in a safe environment where we hoped that they would see us as, as critical friends. And, and this was very much replicated in secondary care experience with the consultants that we, we chose. So in, in, in summary, um, we just felt 
that there was a huge potential to widen the scope of expertise in how it are for the specialists to uh, become in, included in GPs working with them so that they become slightly less specialist, become a little bit more generalist perhaps, but for the primary care uh, guys to become a little bit more specialist. There was a huge potential to help with recruitment. There was a huge potential to decrease expensive locum costs to practices and hospitals alike. And there was a, an ability to avoid health boards uh, taking over responsibility for failing practices, which is extremely expensive. So El Ellen will describe the three fellows we've had so far. And it, it really has, as Ellen will, will agree with me, it's been a, a great fun working with these these guys. They've just been great. So Ellen, you're next, Thank I you. think. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. off, John. So after quite a few months of negotiating with the health board to get job descriptions and HR and all these various bits um, sorted out, and then we also went and got a list of practices that were on the AMBER register. We went out and did some practice visits and chose some practices through a formal application process. We managed to appoint our first uh, GP fellow in September 2019. So Zanira um, was working in a tumble and she still is because she's currently on maternity leave in cross hand surgery. So that was a practice that had lost a lot of GPs and had had difficulty recruiting uh, to the empty posts. She's also got a keen interest in diabetes. So she's been doing the diabetes diploma from Warwick University and working alongside consultants in the outpatient departments in uh, secondary care. So the aim with her is um, as she develops and completes a diploma, she'll be able to move out and not just work in hospital based clinics, but also work um, for her cluster, for her practice and develop um, community led diabetic clinics. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Then in um, January of last year, we appointed two. So the first one is Tim Ryder. He actually had previously been a paramedic and found our job advert because he wanted to move back to the area from uh, Southampton and he had been qualified as a GP for about four years. Uh, he was looking for an integrated care post that involved his interest in general practice, but also in um, emergency medicine. So he is working in another practice that needed a helping hand, Margaret Street in Ammonford. And he's coming to the end now of his uh, post in May of this year, and they've offered him a permanent salaried post with a boot partnership. So that's fantastic. That's exactly what we want, because when we visit these practices and when we tell them about the scheme, the idea is that if everybody gets on and if everything does work out, that the expectation is that that doctor stays in that practice and that they do offer a post. Um, we're not uh, wanting to have sort of a um, sort of rotating door policy where practices are just having a free doctor for a year because these <clears throat> doctors are being paid for by the health board. Uh, so the surgery is having a doctor for free, essentially. Uh, for a whole year so that from the outset there is an expectation that there is a post available there that hasn't been filled and if everything goes well we cannot promise that obviously but that's the uh, intention so tim is also now working with us on a second bevan exemplar project which um, involves us setting up gp triage with wast so this is something that the welsh government recently said was something that they wanted all health boards to get up and running because of the huge amounts of waiting times for an, an ambulance. So we're now hopefully in April going to be starting a GP triage model um, through myself, John and Tim and a couple of other GPs um, looking at the GPs, uh, the WAST stack and reducing ambulance um, conveyance rates because they're the highest in Wales in Carmarthenshire, unfortunately. So um, that's really exciting. Uh, next slide, please. So Sarah Harris started with us just in January of this year. So she was a GP on our training scheme and she's recently qualified. So she's now going to be working in Pontebaram surgery, which had two uh, brothers, actually GPs that were coming up to retirement. 
one actually had retired and come back because she needed to keep the practice going. So she's joined there. She lives down the road. She's really happy with the placement. And she's also always had a keen interest in dermatology and had done some secondary care posts in dermatology. So she's doing the um, online dermatology diploma. She's now uh, working with some local uh, GPs who do secondary care dermatology sessions. And she's also uh, working in those clinics and in community clinics. And she's also, hopefully, as things develop, this is early on, but there is a collaboration between Arch, Swansea Bay and Hawaldha to try and set up a community dermatology service for Hawaldha because that is a very, very understaffed uh, department within Hawaldha um, and it struggles a great deal and they've not been able to recruit a consultant for many years. So these diplomas that these guys are doing are actually being paid for by the health board, which we are extremely, extremely grateful for. But it really gives those GPs um, more confidence and a bit of, well, obviously extra knowledge to be able to become specialists in that field and also bring in their GP um, skills as well. Next slide, please. So as John said, the whole idea is that it's helping out secondary care departments in need, of which there are many, and giving primary care a helping hand. So there's a formal sort of application process and interviews, and we involve the consultants from the relevant departments uh, right from the beginning. So they have two study leave sessions, five GP, two secondary care, and one mentoring session. So John and I do that every week. And that's invaluable because they're learning not just about their specialty, but also about general practice, about management, about business, about prescribing, about clusters. And it's really just trying to see how they're doing through the year and coach them through it. Next slide, please. So we think this is a prudent um, initiative. It's putting the patient at the centre of their care. Um, as a GP, we always get taught to um, involve the patient in sharing decisions and in their management. So it's really bringing everything together and it's making sure that they're getting specialist advice, say, about their diabetes, but from somebody who can also deal with other problems that they might bring to the table as well. Um, it's using effective uses of resources and skills because they're able to use their skills within their own practice, within a cluster, within a community centre, within, um, say, a cottage hospital they could work out of as well. Next slide, please. So that was the last slide. So yeah, as John mentioned, we really wanted to thank the uh, Bevan Commission, especially our um, our mentor, Louis, who has been extremely helpful and really supportive. And I think we've had very long conversations with him over several months and he's been really, really good. I think the Bevan, being a Bevan exemplar has really helped give it a time frame as well. That's really helped steer things along and we found when we've gone to so many meetings with the health board that it is quite helpful sometimes to be able to say look we need to go back to our Bevan mentor and let him know what you think you know it, it does help sort of push things along definitely so thank you very much and thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.